What's going on guys, Bridger back with the Odin Project and we got two more assignments to do in the CSS Foundations and I got one open here. So Descendant Combinator, understanding how combinators work can become a lot easier when you start playing around with them and see what exactly is affected by them versus what isn't. The goal of this exercise is to apply styles to elements that are descendants of another element while leaving elements that aren't descendants of that element unstyled. You can use either type or class selectors for this exercise. Use whichever you may feel you mm -hmm. want to practice with more. The HTML file is set up, so no need to edit anything in it, such that any combination of selectors will work. So if you're feeling adventurous, you can even try combining a type and class selector for the descendant combinator. The properties you need to add are only the P elements that are descendants of the div element should have a yellow background, red text, a font size of 20 pixels, and center aligned. All right, and this is the picture of our desired outcome here on the right. So let's see what we got going on here. Let's see what it looks like right now. All right. So it looks like this should be styled. So this is in the class container and it's got the class text and then we got both of these are container and text. So let's see if we do dot container dot text and then it says we need to have yellow background, so background color yellow um, uh, color should be red for red text we should have a font size of 20 pixels and a line center box online. All right, let's save it and see what that did. Wait, what? Did we get it on the first try? No, we did not. So, align text. I think it's supposed to be text align center. All right, let's save it. And I think we got it on the second try, guys. I think we did it. That's awesome. All right, let's close that. Let's look at the solution CSS and see if we did it. Container.txt, background, red, 20, center. Yes. All right, now on to the next one. Let's close that out and close these guys out. So now we just have cascade fix get the solution opened all right that's what we got to make it look like let's get the readme open and let's open uh, drag that over and drag our styles over okay CSS methods. This final exercise for CSS foundations is going to give you a closer look at the cascade, in particular specificity and rule order. Both the HTML and CSS files are filled out for you, so instead of adding rules yourself, you will simply be editing what is provided. There are a few elements that have some sort of specificity or rule order issue in the provided CSS file. It's up to you to figure out what issue is affecting an element and how to fix it. You can edit the CSS file by adding, removing, or editing selectors for a declaration block or by moving declaration blocks around. You should not edit the HTML file or any of the actual styles in the CSS. There are multiple ways to solve this exercise and we did our best to include all of the possible solutions for each element. Issues with the cascade can be the bane of their existence for many when it comes to CSS. While you won't become a cascade expert from this exercise alone, and there are other ways to deal with these issues, it is still super helpful to see how these issues affect our final styles and why it's important to order rules carefully. All right, 
So we have to make it look like this. So we need to see. Let's get that down there. Okay. I'm just a paragraph with extra bold text. So this has extra bold text. And I'm a smaller. Okay, so this doesn't have the smaller text. So let's look here. I'm going to do this. So I'm just a paragraph is class para and then para small para. So class para small para, they're both bold. And we don't want to change any of this. Confirm para. All right, so I think I'm a smaller child div with extra bold text. So child div dot text. The confirm button is not blue. I mean not green. So confirm dot confirm. What does it say? Adding, removing, or editing selectors. Or by moving declaration blocks around. Okay, so in order for this to be green, background color font weight dot confirm, confirm button, ID confirm button, cancel button. So what's overriding this confirm button? I mean, this is above this button. Oh, but it's the last one. So maybe if we take that out and then add it below, Let's see if that did anything. So let's save it and refresh. All right, so that fixed the button issue. So the buttons are right now. So we'll leave that alone. These two have bold text, but this one needs to be smaller. So we got the para in front of the small para. So I think we need to take this out and put it there. Let's save that and refresh. There we go. Perfect. All right. So those two are right now. And now we just got to work on these here. So this is a div within text. This is a div within text and the child div. And then I'm a smaller child div with extra bold text. So. I'm a smaller child div with extra bold text. So this one I think needs to be put below this one. All right, let's see if that did it. That didn't do anything. Did I save it right? Refresh. Yeah, that didn't do anything. So the child div dot text and the child, let's go back over here. So this is maybe if we add dot child and then dot text, let's see if that works. Heck yeah, guys, we did it. That was pretty easy, actually. I thought I was going to have a harder time with that. All right, let's look at the solution just to make sure, just to see what they did different, because ours looks the same now, but they said there was multiple ways to do it. So we got the body, the para, small para, para, button, 
Oh, they put the div text for the following rule, removed it from its original position in the file, right? Which is what we did. Then we placed it after the par selector, which is what we did, taking advantage of the rule order since both selectors have the same specificity. Another solution would be keeping it in its original place and just chaining selectors, giving this rule a higher specificity. So we could have done that. All right, and then for the confirm, we remove the original dot confirm selector. Then we use an ID selector instead since it has a higher specificity than the dot button selector. Other solutions would be to simply to move it below, which is what we did. And then for this one, we first removed it from its original position in the file, then we added another selector to create a descendant which is what we did, the dot text dot child. And then here, what they did is, um, oh, so they did the same thing. Um, they just moved it and then added it, which is the same thing we did. So, pretty good. All right, guys, I will see you on the next one. Let me know if this was easy for you guys or not. Bye.